Hey guys, I'm T and welcome to the channel. If you're new here, we make trendy and fun crochet tutorials twice a week. And if you haven't already, smash that like button, drop a comment below, and subscribe to join in on the fun. Did something different and made a baby doll top. It's been a minute since I made something like this and I thought it'd be great to add more variety to the channel, plus I had a cute design. If you're looking for something cute and quick in a pinch, this one's got you covered. And speaking about you covered, this channel's got you covered from tank tops to baby doll tops, bralettes, sweats, and even the occasional dress or two. So consider subscribing. If you like any of the content, be sure to click the thumbs up. It really helps the channel a lot, and I would appreciate it dearly. Now it's time to get on with the show, so without further ado. For this project, any category for our yarn will work, but I use a total of 280 grams of yarn, and that's 320 yards if you're stateside. As for tools, a 6mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There is a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount off any $9.99 plus order. And enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us your favorite flower color. For me at the moment, I'm really feeling yellow roses. What's yours? Detail for the giveaway is down below. We're using four stitches for this project and they'll be as follows. Chain. Slip stitch, single crochet, half double crochet, and double crochet. This tutorial is for size small, but you can adjust it for your size and we explain how to in the video. So let's get started. Getting this top started, we're first going to grab our category 4 yarn and make a slip knot. Next, we're going to grab our 6mm hook, and we're all going to start by making a prep chain. Now this chain that we're about to make does not count for our work, we just want to know how many chains that we have that fits around the widest part of our bust, so we know how many rows to do for our bottom section. So I'm going to start by making my chain, then I'll meet you guys back once when I have my length. Alright, so I now have the chain that can fit around the widest part of my bust. My chain's a total of 22 inches or 56 centimeters, and that is a chain of 80 for me. And we don't need this anymore, so now we can get started on the bottom, but do remember this number so that we can do the bottom section together. Now, getting started on the bottom, we're going to start by taking our same category 4 yarn, my same 6 millimeter hook, and we're all going to start by making a chain that reaches from under our bust down to where we want the bottom of this top to be, and it does need to be an even number. So I'm going to start by making a chain of 24, and that's just about 6 inches or 15 centimeters. Now that I have my chain, I'm going to block off my last chain and do a chain of 1. That chain counts as our turning chain, not as a stitch. And then into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, going to insert our hook into there with a single crochet. So insert, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Let's do that again. Into that next chain, pull through, yarn over, pull through two. Continue to put one single crochet into every chain. Now that we've put one single crochet into every chain, what we're going to do from here is start our moss stitch row. So we're going to do a chain two, and flip our work. Now, the first chain that we made is going to count as our turning chain, and the second chain is going to count as our chain. That's going to make more sense in a second. What we're going to do from here after our chain two is skip that first stitch and then single crochet into the next. So insert with a single crochet, and we actually just made our first chain space. That's our first gap right here. Let's do the next one. We're going to chain one skip a stitch, and then single crochet into the next stitch. And that's how we do our moss stitch. Let's do this again. Chain one, skip a stitch, into the next, single crochet. Now from here, we're going to continue to skip a stitch and single crochet into the next, making our way all the way down. And then I'll meet you guys back. All right, we have just made our way all the way down with our row number two. And getting started on our row number three is going to be another moss stitch row. So what we're going to do whenever we're going to start our moss stitch rows is chain two. Flip our work. And just like before, the first chain counts as our turning chain. 
the second chain is going to count as a the second chain is going to count as a chain and from here we're going to do the same thing we're going to skip that first stitch and then single crochet into the next and since this is row number three we're going to be inserting into that chain space that we have so skipping that first stitch which is a single from our previous row insert your hook underneath that next stitch which is our chain space with one single crochet and that forms our first chain space let's do that again chain one skip that next stitch which is the single crochet single crochet into that next stitch which is the chain space from here we're going to continue to chain one skip a stitch single crochet into that chain space making our way all the way down all right we have just made our way all the way down with our row number three now for this bottom section is going to be a three row repeat so from here we're going to do another single crochet two moss stitch and then after that another single crochet and two moss stitch so i'm just going to get started with the single crochet row next so i'm just going to get started with the next single crochet row with you guys i'll let you guys move on from there start with the chain one when we want to start a single crochet row flip our work and now we're going to be putting one single crochet into every stitch and yes that does count every stitch and chain space so insert your hook into that first stitch with one single crochet and then into that next stitch which just so happens to be a chain space insert your hook into there with another single crochet you're going to continue to put one single crochet into every stitch making your way all the way down at the end do a chain two and then start with our moss stitches we're going to keep repeating these three rows until we have double the amount of chains that we made when we started our prep row so if you guys remember i ended up having a total of 80 chains i'm going to keep doing this until i have a total of 160 rows once we have that i will meet you guys back so that we can steam it up turn on some tv get relaxed and i'll meet you guys back All right, so I am back with the entirety of my bottom. I have 160 rows, and now what we're going to do is seam it together. So the first thing that we're going to do is insert our hook with our working yarn into the corner stitch of the other panel that we have, and we do just wanna make sure that it's not twisted. Now, once we have this, we're going to yarn over, pull through everything just to secure the two panels together. And then from here, we're going to single crochet both the front and back panel together. So start by inserting your hook into that first available stitch into the front panel, and also into the first available stitch into the back panel, and then single crochet. Let's do that again. Into the next stitch into the front panel, insert your hook, and then into the next stitch into the back panel, insert your hook, and single crochet let's do one more insert your hook into that next stitch into the front into that next stitch into the back and single crochet we're going to keep doing this making our way all the way down and then i'll meet you guys back all right now that we have seamed up our entire piece and right now we're going to single crochet along the top but we are going to be combining every two side rows that we have so what we're going to do from here is just do a chain one. Now starting with our decrease, we're going to find our first side row. This is my first side row right here. I'm going to insert my hook into that top loop, yarn over, pull through. And this is my next side row. I'm going to insert my hook into the top of that one, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three loops that's how we are combining our two side rows so basically just a decrease of two single crochets let's do the next few together this is my next side row right here i'm going to insert my hook yarn over pull through into that next side row which is this one right here insert my hook pull through yarn over pull through all three that is my second one let's do this again this is my next side row insert my hook pull through into my next side row insert my hook pull through yarn over and pull through all three now we're going to keep combining every two side rows that we have and then once we make our way all the way around we're going to slip stitch into that chain one space and the amount of stitches that we have on top should equal out to the same amount of chains that we made for our prep chain when we first started off this video 
So go ahead and get all of this done and then I'll meet you guys back. We are back and we have just single crocheted along the entirety of the top of our piece. And now we're going to work on the band. So the first thing we're going to have to do is make a chain the length that we want our band to be. Now I want mine to be about two inches or five centimeters. So I'm going to start by making a chain of eight. Now that I have my chain, I'm going to block off my last chain and do a chain of one. That doesn't count as a stitch, that counts as our turning chain. And from here, we're going to put one slip stitch into every chain. So starting with the chain that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert our hook, yarn over, and pull through everything. Let's do that again. Into that next chain, yarn over, pull through everything on our hook. Into that next chain, insert your hook, yarn over, and pull through everything. Continue to put one slip stitch into every chain. Now that we've put one slip stitch into every chain, we now need to connect it into the base. So how we're going to do that is slip stitch it into that next stitch into the base. When we have that, we're going to work our way up to the next row by slip stitching into there, flipping our work, and then putting one back loop slip stitch into every stitch. Continue to do this, making our way all the way down. And when we make our way down to the end, do a chain one, flip your work, and put one back loop slip stitch into every stitch, connecting it into the base the same way we just did. I'll meet you guys back so that we can seam it all up when we don't have any more stitches left. All right, so I'm back and I have just finished up doing my band. What we're going to do from here is seam it up. So we're going to first make sure that our work is flipped right side out. So the seam that we have for the bottom is along the inside. And we're going to be inserting our hook into the corner stitch of both of our panels. Now that we have this, we're going to yarn over, pull through everything, and now both panels are nice and secure. And now we're going to do our outside loop slip stitch seam. So inserting our hook into that first stitch into the front panel, we're going to insert only into that front loop, and then into that first stitch into the back panel, insert only into that back loop. We have three loops on our hook now, so yarn over and pull through all three of those loops. Let's do that again. Into that next stitch, into the front panel, insert, and then into the next stitch, into the back panel, insert, into that back loop. Yarn over and pull through everything. We're going to continue to do this, making our way all the way down. Now, since I'm working down towards my bottom, I'm going to do a chain up of one and cut, and then reinsert my hook along the top right here. If you guys are working up this way, then I'll meet you guys back along the top. You don't have to do a chain of one cut. Alright, so now that everything is all seamed up, we're ready to single crochet across the top of our band. Insert your yarn onto your hook. Pull through and do a chain up of one to secure. Now we're going to be putting one single crochet into every side slip stitch row, so let's get that started. This is my first side slip stitch row right here. It's this divot, so I'm going to find that top loop. I'm going to insert with just one single crochet. Once we have that, I'm going to find my next side slip stitch row, which is this raised row right here. I'm going to find that top loop, insert my hook, and then single crochet. And now we should have two single crochets. Let's do one more set together. My next side slip stitch is this divot right here. Insert your hook into that top loop with one single crochet. And then into your next side slip stitch row, which mine is this raised one, I'm going to insert into that top loop and single. Continue to do this, making our way all the way around, slip stitch into that chain one space and cut. And then we two guys back so we can start working out the cups. We have just finished up single crocheting along the top of our band, and now we're going to get started on our cup. The first thing we're going to have to do is insert our stitch markers into our middle stitches. Now I have a total of 80 stitches, so I have two middle stitches. Mine is into my 40th and 41st stitch, but if you guys just have one, go ahead and insert just one. And now we can get started on one of our cups. So I'm going to start by inserting my hook into that stitch marker stitch. And once we have that, we're going to be inserting our yarn onto your hook and pull through. Now the cups are going to start the same way for every size. So from here, we're all going to get started with a chain two. Now that doesn't count as a stitch. That's just our turning chain and we want this height. 
from here we're going to be doing an increase of two half double crochets into that same stitch that our chain two is coming out of or that stitch marker stitch so yarn over insert your hook into that stitch with one half double crochet and then into that same stitch marker stitch with our second half double crochet now that we have this we need to connect it into the base so what we're going to do is slip stitch it just into that next stitch that we have to close off this row so insert yarn over pull through we now have row number one all finished up so let's get started on our row number two and we are going to get started with our Suzette stitch as well so to work our way up to the next row slip stitch up that next stitch and flip your work now for our row number two we're going to be doing our Suzette stitch which is one single and one double crochet into the same stitch into that first stitch that we have so start by inserting your hook into that stitch with one single crochet and then into that same stitch with one double crochet so yarn over insert your hook yarn over pull through we should have three loops on our hook so from here we're going to yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and since we have one stitch left to close off this row we're going to yarn over and then insert into that last stitch with one half double crochet and now that our row two is all finished up we're going to get started on our row number three so since we're along the outside we're going to chain one flip our work and we're going to get started with our Suzette stitch again so into that first stitch we're going to insert our hook with one single crochet and then into that same stitch with one double crochet from here on out when we are working towards our base we're going to continue to do our Suzette stitches until we are two stitches away from the base now since we're right here we're going to do an increase of three into that stitch that's nearest to the base so we're going to skip the next stitch and then into the next we're going to put an increase of three half double crochets so there is one there is two and there is three half double crochets and now to close off our row number three we're going to slip stitch into that next stitch into the base and now we should have one two three rows now to get started on the next row slip stitch into that next stitch flip our work and when we are working out from our base we are going to start with an increase of two half double crochets so start with a yarn over into that first stitch with one and then with two half double crochets from here we're going to continue on with our suzette stitches so we're going to skip the next stitch into the next with your suzette so one single crochet and one double crochet then we should have two stitches left so skip the next stitch and into that last stitch we are going to start with a single and then a double and then into this last stitch whenever we're working our way out we need to do another double crochet into that same last stitch so we are always going to end with a single and two double crochets now let's get started on our row number five chain one flip our work now that we're along the outside we're working down towards the base so remember we're going to do our Suzette stitches all the way down until we have two stitches left so let's get that started into that first stitch insert with one single crochet and one double crochet skip one stitch into that next stitch one single crochet and one double crochet continue to do this until we have two stitches left so I'm just going to do my next one which is one single and one double and now that we're nearly at the base we're going to skip the next stitch and then do an increase of three half double crochets into that last stitch so yarn over insert your hook with one half double crochet into that same last stitch with two half double crochet and then into that same one with three and now we're going to connect it into the base so just slip stitch it into that next stitch 
Now together we should have a total of one, two, three, four, and five rows. Now this is going to be a repeat of rows four and five until we get the height of the cup that we want. So I'm just going to do rows six and seven with you guys and let you guys do the rest on your own. So starting our row number six, we're going to slip stitch into that next stitch to work our way up to the next row and flip our work. Now from the base working out, we're always going to start with an increase of two half double crochets. So yarn over into that first stitch, there it goes one, and into that same first stitch, there it goes two half double crochets. From here, we're going to skip the next stitch and then into the next. There it goes one single crochet and then one double crochet. Let's do this again until we reach the end of this row. Skip the next stitch, single crochet, and double crochet. Skip the next stitch, single crochet, and double crochet. Now we should have just two stitches left, so we're going to skip one stitch, and then into the last stitch along the edge, we're going to do one single crochet, one double crochet, and then one more double crochet into that last stitch because we need to continue on with the increase. And once we have that, to work our way up to the next row, which is our row number seven, we're going to chain one, flip our work. Now we're going to do our Suzette stitches, making our way all the way down until we have just two stitches left. Into that next stitch, single, and double. Skip the next stitch, single, and double. Skip the next, single, and double, and keep doing this until we have just two stitches left in this row. All right, so we are back and I have one, two stitches left. Into that last stitch, we're going to now do an increase of three. So there is one, there is two, and there is three half double crochets. And now to close off our row number seven, we're going to slip stitch into that next stitch into the base. Now, like I said, we're going to keep repeating our two previous rows until we get the height of the cup that we want. And we do need to meet back along the bottom so that we can do the underarm portion. I am back with the height of my cup. I made a total of 13 rows and my height from where we first started to this point is just about six inches or 15 centimeters. And since we all should have ended along the bottom, we're now going to start working on our underarm portion. So what we're going to do from here is work our Suzette stitches, making our way all the way up until where we want our underarm portion to start to curve. So just to do the first one with you guys, I'm going to slip stitch into that next stitch into the base, flip my work. And then since we're not doing any increases or decreases, we're going to insert our hook into that first stitch with one single and one double crochet. Skip the next stitch into the next one, one single and one double crochet. We're going to keep doing this until we get the underarm height that we want. And just to let you guys know, I'm going to have a total of nine sets. And from here all the way up, it's going to be roughly five and a half inches or 14 centimeters. All right, so I've made my way all the way up with my Suzette stitches. And now since we need our underarm portion to curve, we're going to be doing a decrease of three half double crochets. We're going to yarn over, insert your hook into that next stitch, pull through, into that next stitch, pull through, and then once more into that next stitch, pull through. We should have one, two, three, four, and five loops on our hook. So we're going to yarn over and pull through all five of those loops. Now we're going to continue our decreases. So do a chain two from here, flip our work, and we're going to start with a decrease of three half double crochets. So yarn over into that first stitch, insert, pull through, insert, pull through, and insert, pull through. We're going to yarn over, pull through everything on our hook, 
and then continue with our Suzette stitches making our way all the way down. So to do this first set, remember we are going to be skipping our double crochet from our previous row. So after our decrease of three, skip that next stitch and then into the next one, our Suzette. So one single and one double. Skip the next stitch into the next single and double. Continue to do this, making our way all the way down. All right, so we have made our way all the way down with our second underarm row. We're gonna slip stitch into that next stitch into the base to close off this row. And now to work up our third underarm row, we're going to slip stitch into that next stitch, flip our work. And then from here, we need to do our Suzette stitches into every single crochet stitch. So skip that first one because that is a double crochet. And then do our single and then double. Skip the next stitch into the next one single, one double. And then continue to do this until we have just three stitches left so that we can do one more decrease of three half double crochets together. All right, so I've just made my way all the way down with my third underarm row. I have one, two, three stitches left, and now we're going to close this with a decrease of three half double crochets. So yarn over, insert into that third to last stitch, pull through, second to last, pull through, and into that last, pull through, yarn over, pull through all five of those loops. And from here, we're going to repeat. So just as a refresher, chain two. Flip our work and then do a decrease of three half double crochets. Skip the next stitch and then do our Suzette into the next and then make our way all the way down. We're going to keep repeating these two rows until this decreases all the way down till we get the height that we want our back panel to be, making sure that we meet back along the base and then I'll meet you guys back. All right, so I am back and I am all done with my underarm portion. I have a total of 19 rows. And since we all sort of end along the bottom, I'm going to show you guys how we're going to do our back. And then we're going to keep repeating that all the way until we reach our tail end along the back. So since we are along the base, we're going to slip stitch into that next stitch to work our way up to the next row and flip our work. Now from here, we're going to do our Suzette stitches, making our way all the way up. So just like before, we're going to be skipping that first stitch because that's not a single crochet stitch and then single crochet and double crochet into the next. Now we're gonna keep doing this, making our way all the way up. All right, so we've just done our Suzette stitches, making our way all the way up, and we should have just one stitch left, which is the decrease from our previous row. All we're gonna to do to close that off is insert with one half double crochet. And once we have that, we're going to chain one, flip our work, and then do our Suzette stitches, making our way all the way down. So starting by inserting your hook into that first stitch with one single and one half double crochet. And then we're going to skip that next stitch because it is not a single crochet stitch. And then into the next one single and one double. Continue to do this, making our way all the way down. All right, we've made our way all the way down with our second back row. We're going to close it off by slip stitching into that next stitch into the base. And then we're gonna do the next row with each other. So slip stitch into that next stitch into the base, flip our work, and we're going to do our Suzette stitches making our way down again. So skip that first stitch into the second with one single and one double, and we're gonna keep doing this, making our way all the way down. All right, so we've made our way all the way down with our Suzette stitch, and now we need to half double crochet again. But for this row, we should have two stitches left. Now we're going to yarn over, preparing for a half double crochet. Skip that next stitch and then half double crochet into that next stitch. And we're doing that so we can have a blunt line along the top. And from here, it's going to be a repeat of our two previous rows. So just to start this off, chain one, flip our work, one single and one double into that first stitch, skip to the next and then repeat, making our way all the way down and keep repeating those two rows, making our way all the way until we reach our tail end, right where our single crochet row stops, and then do a chain up one and cut. I'll meet you guys back just so I can show you guys where we're going to be repeating the same thing that we just did for our other cup. 
All right, I have made my way all the way down until I have reached my tail end. From here, I'm going to do a chain up a one and cut, and then I'll show you where to insert your hook for the next cup, but it's going to be a repeat of this entire cup that we just did together. All right, so since I have this one cup all finished up, what we're going to do is insert our hook into that next stitch marker stitch that we have, or if you guys just have one middle stitch, insert it into that same stitch and then repeat everything that we did here, making our way all the way down till we reach the tail end in the back. Once we have that, I will meet you guys back so that we can seam it all together. And this is what it should look like. Once and yours is all done, I'll meet you guys back. Now that we are done with both of our cups and underarms and backs, what we're going to do is seam the backs together. The first thing that we need to do is flip our work wrong side out so that the seam for the bottom is face up. Once we flip it right side out, all of our seams are going to be along the inside. And what we're going to do from here is insert our hook into that first stitch into both the front and back panel. And I'm going to pull through. I'm going to do a chain up of one to secure and let's do our single crochet seam. It's going to be the same as the bottom. So start by inserting your hook into that first stitch into the front panel and then insert your hook into that first stitch into the back panel and then we're going to single crochet. Let's do that again into that next stitch into the front panel and into that next stitch into the back panel and then single crochet. We're going to keep doing this until we don't have any more stitches left and then do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so we have just finished seaming up our cups together and now we are going to work on our single crochet that's going to clean up our edges and our strap at the same time. So the first thing we're going to do is insert our hook into our stitch marker stitch where our cups meet into the band. I'm going to insert my yarn onto my hook, pull through, and I'm going to start by single crocheting along the inner edge of my cup. And we're gonna be alternating between one to two single crochet into every side row. Now this may be a little tricky cause they may be a little smushed at the end of our rows. So we're gonna do the first feed with each other. Now to do our first one, we're gonna find our first side row. This is mine right here. This should be a little bit easier to find. Go ahead and insert your hook into there. And then into that first one, we're just going to do one single crochet. Now our next side row should be a little bit of a gap like this one right here. We're gonna insert our hook into there with two single crochets. So there's one, and then there's two. Let's do the next set. This is my next side row right here. I'm gonna insert my hook with one single crochet. And this is my next side row. I'm gonna insert my hook into there with two single crochets. Now we're going to keep doing this, making our way all the way up until I reach the corner of this cup. And then I will meet you guys back so we can work on the strap. All right, so I've just single crocheted my way all the way up to the top. Now from here, we're going to make a chain that can be used as a strap around our neck. So I'm going to start off and make a chain of 60 and that's going to be 16 inches or 41 centimeters. Now that we have our chain, we're going to block off that last chain, do a chain of one. That doesn't count as a stitch, that's our turning chain. And then into that chain that we blocked off, or the second chain from our hook, we're going to insert with a single crochet, and then make our way all the way down, putting one single crochet into every chain. All right, so I've made my way all the way down, putting one single crochet into every chain, and now we're going to single crochet, making our way all the way down around the back and then up to this point so that we can do the strap on this other side. So start by inserting your hook into that first stitch with a single crochet. The first few stitches that we have are going to be regular single crochets. So just put one into each of those and I'll meet you guys back once we reach our side rows because that can be a little mushy and hard to see as well. All right, so I'm at my side rows and we're just going to do the first few with each other. This is my first side row that I have right here. Go ahead and insert your hook with one single crochet. This is my next side row. Insert into there with just one single crochet. Then keep doing this, making our way all the way around. So from here, making our way all the way to this point that we have right here, we're just gonna be putting one single crochet into every side row. Then I'll meet you guys back at this point, just so I can talk you guys how to do the strap one more time. All right, so I've made my way all the way back to the point of this cup over here. 
and we're going to repeat the same thing that we did here. So make a chain the same amount that we did on this side, chain one, single crochet all the way down, and then single crochet down the inside of this cup, making sure we're alternating between one to two single crochets into every side row. And then once we reach the middle portion, slip stitch into that middle stitch, do a chain up one and cut, and then I'll meet you guys back. All right, so I've just single crocheted my way all the way down. I have done a chain up one and cut, and now we are all done. The last thing we're gonna have to do is weave in all of our ends. And there you have it. We are all done, and I hope you guys enjoy the tutorial. Don't forget to check us out on Instagram, Pinterest, or Twitter. All of those links are down below. And don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Catch y'all in the next one. Bye.